Hey everybody, Blue and Gold Z, and wanted to do a video that was a little bit different than what my channel is normally about, which is uh, firearms. And this is basically going to be the first video of a subsection in my channel related to current events and politics, something that I have an interest and passion with, or passion of. And as the video title states, this is primarily about, or is about, um, ISIS, the Islamic State of Iraq and Syria, and basically what they're doing in Iraq and Syria, and how this relates to us here in the U.S. I originally started noticing it after I started paying attention to some of the more liberal uh, news channels, such as CNN and MSNBC. I wanted to try and keep a more balanced um, view of what's going on, considering that I'm a pretty staunch conservative, and I usually like to watch, like you know, Glenn Beck and 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 uh, organizations or channels such as that. And when I was watching this stuff about ISIS or ISIL, what I did is, when I was actually watching the news about it, I would actually flip back and forth between the different channels, whether they were liberal, again, like MSNBC or CNN or more conservative like Fox. And one of the things that I noticed about ISIS between all these different channels um, was that they were all on the same page and they were all saying the same thing which if you are into politics here in the US and you do happen to watch the news it is extremely rare and almost like eyebrow raising that both sides of the political aisles are saying the same thing and when I when I noticed that it didn't make me think like oh we're finally agreeing on something this is good it actually made me suspicious and regardless of the special guests that were on the various channels, like for instance, MSNBC might have some sort of senator on there from like New Mexico, and Fox might have, you know, Defense Secretary Hagel on there. They were interviewing them about ISIS. Again, they were all saying the same thing. And it just kind of made my eyes roll, and I just, it, it really made me kind of scratch my head and, and almost go, you know, really? Are you really trying to pander this to me? And basically, what that information was, was again, regardless of the channel, regardless of the guest, um, they were all saying the same thing, that ISIS is the biggest, most com uh, most complicated, the most uh, sophisticated threat that the U.S. has seen since uh, the Iraq War or the Vietnam War or something crazy like that. And again, I just couldn't believe what I was hearing. Um, I believe one of the special guests, I don't remember if it was a senator or a former, uh, you know, uh, like a former general or a former colonel or something like that, but I remember one of them saying, it was a public official, um, I believe. I remember the guy saying that this, the uh, one of the, the the American journalists that had their head cut off was an attack against the United States, and this constitutes basically a conflict. Um, and I just couldn't believe that he actually said that. Uh, a journalist getting their head cut off does not constitute an attack on the United States. I'm sorry, it just it just doesn't. And the fact that you were even trying to propose that idea to the American public just shows you how, you know, how how hard they are trying to drum up support uh, for a, a new conflict, you know, in the Middle East. Um, so yeah, basically what you're seeing is you're seeing all these these news channels, whether they are left or right or somewhere in between, they're all saying the same thing. They're all saying that ISIS is the most horrible thing and we need to go after them. And and I'm surprised because I don't think even Glenn Beck, I could be wrong, but I, I don't have his channel anymore since I moved. Um, I don't even think I hear Glenn Beck saying, hold on a second, let's just wait. No need to jump to conclusions. No need to, um, you know just go off off the hilt and, and start you know going to war or anything like that. I don't even think he's saying that. And what's interesting is that when you look at some of the internet boards like on Yahoo, whenever there's a news article you get to talk about it and you can debate with people underneath it. Even though this is a small snapshot and a microcosm of the whole entire population, a great majority of the people that are saying, "Oh, they're you know they're cutting our people's heads off overseas, and we need to go in there, and we need to you know get boots on the ground, and we need to take care of Syria, and we need to go back into Iraq and fix Iraq and stuff like that," they're getting a whole bunch of of thumbs up. I would actually go in there and be like, "Guys, you do see that they're trying to push another agenda again. This is going to be the third time that we were going in there." Obviously, you can see it isn't working as far as the, the two previous times that we've gone in there. Um, I mean, you know, there's there's these ISIS people are running around with artillery supplied by the U.S. They're running around with not just AK-47s, but M4 carbines and M16s as well. Like, that should be a kind of a sign that it isn't working the way that we've done it before. And it probably won't work way, you know, again, if, if we were to go in again. And, 
you know, when I when I tell people this, and then I also say things like, you know, journalists getting their heads cut off is not enough of a reason for us to go in and start another conflict. I get a bunch of thumbs down. So I think that the indoctrination that you see from all these news outlets and TV channels saying that ISIS is a huge threat. Unfortunately, I think it's actually working for a majority of the U.S. population. And then you get people like me outside of the box saying, you know, this is another bunch of saber rattling. They're trying to get you to, to support another conflict. It's not really why we need to go in there. And then, you know, I get a lot of negative attention and negative reactions. So basically this leads to my next point is if there's – if there if there's a possibility that the U.S. government is not successful in drumming up enough support to go into conflict, like right now they're pulling out our heartstrings by showing these videos of U.S. journalists who willingly went in there, you know, to do their job, you know, they're, they're getting their heads cut off. They're, they're using this to pull at our heartstrings and to get us pissed off to support another conflict. However, I have a theory that it won't be enough for us to actually support uh, going in on the ground and doing another invasion and whatnot. My fear, and um, this is what my instincts are telling me because I've never felt like this before, is again, when you see all the news media trying to beat it into our heads, and again, they're all on the same page regardless of their political leanings, which is kind of scary. Um, I believe that it won't work, at least initially, and I think that within one year, I think something big and bad is going to happen. Um, and if you want to connect the dots or read in between the lines. My fear, um, again, I don't, I hope it isn't going to happen, but my fear is that there's probably going to be another false flag of a 9-11 size or perhaps even bigger to galvanize the U.S. population into saying, you know what, we need to go in there again. We need, you know, maybe third time is a charm. Maybe we'll finally get rid of all these Muslim extremists, but, you know, we'll figure that out later. Let's, let's go in there right now and let's kick some ass. So that's my fear, is that they would actually, either the U.S. government would be complicit in this idea, or perhaps they might even be an architect in, in a false flag event, or they will know that it's going to happen, but they will just let it happen. They might, actually, they might not actually be a part of it, but they'll just let it happen. I know that sounds crazy, but I just feel that within a year, something is going to happen that's not going to be good at all. And part of my problem with that is that with all the Patriot Act, you know, programs that have spawned from the Patriot Act, um, with all the NSA abilities, the FBI, the CIA abilities, as well as the abilities of our military, whether it's reconnaissance or hard assets, for something to happen in the U.S. after all these supposed precautions that we've taken, it's just not possible that a 9-11 event can happen again without the U.S. government knowing it just as impossible. So I'll leave everybody with this. I want to make it a very short 10 minute video that is more along the lines of food for thought is if something was to happen in the U.S. on the level of like 9-11, either not as big as 9-11 or bigger, whatever, on that level, or it could be multiple 9-11 sized events, is before we um, go off the hilt and say, you know what, we need to invade those guys. They did it to us again. Like I said, it's not possible, and if something like that was to happen, before we look and start pointing fingers outside of our borders, we I think that we as a people need to start pointing fingers to our elected officials and supposed leaders inside our borders. And I think that, if, again, if something was to happen, a lot of those people need to be replaced. Like We would need to hold emergency elections. We would need to get new people in the House. We would need to get new people in the Senate. And uh, dare I say, we may even need to get, you know, a new president, vice president, and cabinet. Because I guarantee you, if we were actually to elect some of the people that truly, truly represented the people, you wouldn't be hearing any of this saber rattling and ISIS is, oh my God, they're the worst thing and we need to go in there and go get them. You wouldn't be hearing any of that. Um, chances are it's all being driven by one of the central banks, you know, as a reason to go in there. So lesson of the day is pretty much be vigilant be aware do not at least at this moment support doing any kind of military adventurism where we need to invade other countries just look at what's going on you know read some newspapers read some magazines or you know the easiest thing is watch some tv watch the various channels msnbc cnn fox glenn beck maybe 
um, on his channel and see what's going on and draw your own conclusions and um, you know think for yourselves and see if there's a pattern going on and let's see how you feel about that pattern alright guys that's all I have for today just thought I'd get this message out there because I do feel it's important uh, stay tuned for more videos blue on gold Z signing out